welcome to our first ever video podcast here on Golf Talk Canada as we're trying to keep the wheel rolling downhill and give some of our fans and our listeners and our audience uh, an opportunity to still talk golf and connect on some topics that maybe uh, we don't normally get to on Golf Talk Canada radio and TV. And it's been kind of fun as Bob and Adam and I have reached out to you on social media and said, you know, what type of topics um, do you want us to, to cover? What, what things are you interested in that we don't get into because we're busy uh, chasing the sun with the PGA Tour, as they say. And some of the topics we've come up with today are fantastic. We're going to get into what happens in a tour van uh, on the tour. We're going to get into some of our favorite interviews and who runs the best uh, press conference. And I've got a question for Bob that I haven't told him in advance, so I'm curious what his <laughs> answer Uh-oh. is on that. Don't worry, Bob, I won't put you on the spot on anything. Uh, and, uh, and of course we're going to bring in Skelly time for his quick thoughts on some of the things we talk about, but Bob, what we're going to start with today, which I find very interesting because you and I have been at a gazillion events together, but we never get to work the events together because usually our duties are, are like so different. And I'm curious to this answer as well. Uh, so before I talk about what my day is like at a PGA tour event, um, the question from our Twitter audience and social media audience was, what's a day in the life like of Bob Weeks and Mark Zucchino when they're covering a PGA Tour event for whether it be uh, TSN or, for my case, PGA Tour Radio? So I'll go with you, Bob. What's a day? Walk us through a day. And do me a favor, too. Walk us through a, the difference in covering the Masters versus covering the uh-huh. U.S. Open, because I know it's a bit much bigger animal. I'm doing things at the Masters that I never do any other time of year. So let's start with that. Well, it, it also depends a little bit on the day of the week. So, for instance, if it's a Monday, Tuesday, usually, usually we'll fly in either Sunday or Monday of the start of the tournament week. For the Masters, you are always there Sunday. In fact, this year we were actually slated to go down Saturday because there's the drive, chip, and putt things to cover uh, in the women's amateur. But the essentially uh, you go in at the start of the week and the first couple days you're kind of just feeling things out. I like to try and um, I always like to try and get an interview, a preview interview with any Canadians who are in the field, talk to them. There's usually some press conferences. Uh, re- almost always Tiger talks on Tuesday. We always call that Tiger Tuesday and he'll come into the press conference and if he's in the field and, and wax eloquently about what's going on. And then, um, and then, so Tuesday, you're usually set doing a scene setter. That's the first day we'll do a report into Sports Center. You're usually doing a scene setter. What's going on? Who are we looking at? What's the tournament? What's the course like? All those kind of things. So, in a lot of cases, you know, you're hanging around the range. You're talking to players that you know. You're just even even with other reporters, you're kind of sharing well, maybe some ideas or story notes or rumors that you heard, trying to find out what the story is going to be like. Who's going to be hot? And then as you get closer to the actual tournament day, of course, things get a little bit more. It's, it's actually easier once the tournament is underway for me because I think the, uh, the ball's in the air. And now you're, you're not chasing five or six different stories as you might be at the start of the week. You're chasing basically who's leading uh, and how the Canadians are doing. So we're always it, – it's long days when the tournament starts because you're generally there from the first tee time to the last tee time. And the more Canadians there are in the field, the more there is to cover and, and, and invariably, you know, they don't all, they don't all play uh, within an hour of each other. It's usually one guy's at eight o'clock and one guy's at two fifty. So you're hanging around all day to kind of get their reports. Cause a, a lot of cases, you know, you don't hear from Adam Hadwin on, on the American channels or the American media and things like that, he, unless he happens to be leading or something like a Nick Taylor did at Pebble. So, I mean, that's in a nutshell is kind of what the, what the week's like. I know yours is a little different cause you're out there doing play by play. Well, yeah, my, mine's a little different, and I'm kind of—I was kind of interested in what you just said there regarding um, how it it changes as the tournament starts, how it becomes uh, e- almost easier as the tournament unfolds. And, and for my uh, take, it, it's similar as well it, it, because it gets easier as you go to the weekend. So we get there on Wednesday. We do like a, a pre-tournament podcast for PGA Tour Radio, which they send out to kind of SiriusXM and they send out on PGATour.com. And it's more like what are the storylines, to your point, when you're kind of teeing it up during the week for Sports Center and things like that. It's what are the storylines going in? But a lot of that stuff is, you know, you're, you're throwing darts at a board. That might not come to fruition once the tournament <laughs> right. starts, right? <laughs> on uh, Our broadcast windows are insanely large on radio. Um, We'll broadcast on Thursday and Friday, six or seven hours live, depending on the tournament. And we'll get to the golf course at least two hours before the tournament starts. So we're at the golf course, say 10 a.m., go live at noon, 
get off the air at six or seven. That's Thursday or Friday. And the likelihood of you being with one group on those days are probably slim and none. Unless, even if you have the tiger assignment that day, you'll talk tiger, but you will not, uh, and you'll call tiger, but when he's done, you're going back out to do something else. Uh, quite often you're calling like a dozen groups running around the golf course with chicken with your head cut off. So Thursday and Friday, it's really just calling golf shots and there's not a lot of context. So to your point, Bob, for us, it's kind of when we get to the weekend, like you said, when the ball's up in the air Thursday, the story starts to develop for us from a broadcast standpoint, that starts Saturday. Cause now we're calling golf in context. It's like, okay, this is your group mark. And each shot kind of adds to the storyline of how we're going to get to that winner circle on Sunday night. So I really enjoy the weekend. I find Thursday and Friday, a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of long days of labor. And when we get to the weekend, I find it more storytelling, which, which is what I enjoy because if you really feel like you're kind of involved in the event and, and you really feel like you're heading to a finish line. Uh, a lot of people always ask me, Bob, like, how do you know when you're live? How do you know when to talk, when not to talk? The first time I did it was uh, six, five or six years ago at the Canadian Open. And it was chaos. And when I did that, I didn't, I said to, I said to my wife, I said to Mrs. Golf Talk Canada, I said, uh, I'm not so sure I can do this. Like I thought I could do this, but I'm not so sure. The, the chaos in your headset is unbelievable. You know, when you and I do TV, we'll have like a producer or one or two voices in our head uh, as we're trying to communicate to one another and do TV. On radio, we have our, our producer who's amazing. We have our assistant producer. We have the other two people on the ground. We have our host, our analyst. You can have five, six, seven voices going at once, and you need to be aware of what voice you need to be listening to when you're live, when you're on tape, where you need to throw it. I mean, it's a, it's, I should be in a straitjacket by now. <laughs> it's, it's very different. I remember the old days when we used to do CTV and, and TSN used to do uh, – well, at one point we did five live broadcasts uh, during the summer. And you're right. It can be very, you really have to concentrate on who's saying what and when you come in. And, uh, you know, golf is the, the, the toughest sport on television to broadcast because you have stuff happening simultaneously all over the golf course. So the producers in, in those events, and I'm sure it's on radio the same way, get certainly earn their keep. Yeah, they're, they're unbelievable. They, have the, they truly have the hardest job out there. It, it is just incredible. And uh, I will add one more thing, Bob, and you'll appreciate this because you get to sit to my left for radio and TV for the entire year. So, you know, I like to project. <laughs> That's not <laughs> yeah. one of the hardest things uh, that I ever had to do uh, when I started this job. One of the <laughs> hardest things was, was try to talk low and guard my <laughs> voice because of the first couple events I did. I mean, players were looking at me shaking their heads all the time. The, top, the, 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 uh, the typical golf talk, right? You have to whisper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not the best whisperer. So. No, no, exactly. All right, so that kind of covers a little bit. We, we dove yep. a little bit there into what a day is for us and how long a day is. And, uh, you know, we could go a lot deeper. And maybe yeah. um, you and I got a lot of things going on social media and tsn.ca. So maybe we'll dive deeper into that uh, as, as this goes and as this unfolds. But the tour van, Bob, that was the next question. The next topic we had was, can you let us know a little bit more about the tour van? Now, I'm going to be bluntly honest. Uh, the only tour van experience that I have is with our, our friends at TaylorMade because, you know, I've been with uh, Team TaylorMade for over 10 years and we get to visit their uh, van uh, quite often. So I can talk very much from a, uh, a TaylorMade perspective of, you know, uh, Tiger being like a real tinkerer and Tiger's a guy that, that it almost takes forever to get something into play. He's probably the most anal or meticulous about new equipment, a guy that probably has uh, the tour van on speed dial and, and wants to know everything they're doing and everything they're touching when it comes to his setup. And, and then there's guys like DJ that, you know, they certainly care about it. They certainly go to the kingdom, get set up, but they're, they're much more open to throwing new gear into competition than say a Tiger Woods. Especially so, putters. <laughs> yeah, especially putters, man. Just even the last event, uh, I was at the, the Genesis and it was a revolving bag. I think, he yeah, well, he putted with two putters in competition at the Genesis DJ, but he had four or five with them that week. I saw him rolling. Yeah, on that's the right. green. It was absolutely crazy. But uh, in your ex uh, experience with the tour van, uh, what other tour vans have you, have you been to? And uh, have you, what, you know, what's a common thing? Cause for me, I, you know, I think the older guys, I like the guys that some of the older guys back in the day were always, you know, I always thought maybe 
tweak it a little bit more th than some of the newer guys. But I think maybe that is kind of coming full circle now. We're seeing guys like Trotty with his grinding machine and things like that. So I think it's coming full circle that we're maybe back to the tinkering days. Yeah, I've been in uh, I've been in Callaways. I've been in Titleist. I spent most of my time in the TaylorMade one as well. Uh, I had a, a good chance to do a little thing with years ago with Bob Vokey. And, you know, he would walk down the range and he would just talk. He was actually talking with Mike Weir. And Mike was talking about the grind on his wedge. And it was like they were talking, it was like they had telepathy because they weren't really saying specific things, but somehow Vogie knew what Weir wanted. And then we followed him back into the tour truck and he got on the grinding machine and he, and he you know, bumped a little bit here or cut off a little bit here and worked on it. Um, I do remember we also did a piece a number of years ago on how fast the guys in the TaylorMade truck could put a... Uh, could put a driver together. And I think they got it down to like under two minutes. They could actually physically build a driver. Now you couldn't hit with it because it would still be, uh, the glue would still be getting getting fixed up in there. But I think that that's how old it was because it was still glue, there were still gluing shafts in at that point. Um, but it was amazing to see how quickly they can put things together. And anytime I've always been in any of the vans, you always see players in there. And some of them are more meticulous, as you said. I remember Retief Goosen coming in and putting all his irons on the loft and lie machine to check them all and make sure they were specifically what he wanted. And then you'll always see a bag of clubs with uh, uh, masking tape on the club and, and a name written on it because they've prepared some kind of a new club for guys. So guys are getting in and out and they have, they have guys who are running on the um, also running on the uh, um, back and forth between the range and the, and the golf course like to try Keith. and, uh, and, like and deliver for, clubs. Right. Uh, yeah. Taylor made. So, so it's a, it's a nonstop thing. And those guys are only there Monday, Tuesday, and kind of part of Wednesday. And then they get in these trucks and these are big, you know, big 18 wheelers and they're off to the next stop. So it's a real nomadic life for these guys. They set up shop, they grind away hard for two and a half days or so, and then off to the next stop. Yeah. That's an interesting part of that too, but like most of these guys are gone on Wednesday or Thursday. Very few of them are ever there for the weekend. Uh, maybe if it's a major or a player's right. championship, but other than that, they're kind of off the next spot. And I always kind of thought like, what if something happens on the weekend? It's, it, you know, it's not like, uh, it's not like we don't see equipment problems or things break or things <laughs> like that on the weekend. And these guys all of a sudden, you know, I know they can get stuff, but I mean, certainly their access to the tour van and access to equipment and changes past Thursday is very limited. And I think that would surprise a lot of people. Yeah. I think, I mean, most guys have backups and also, you know, overnight couriers, these guys are so good. If the guy breaks an iron shaft or something, they can probably get it to him in 24 hours, no matter where he is in the world. So there's also that aspect of it too. Now, just to pick up on this before we kind of close the door on tour van and things of that nature, yours truly, Bob, I'm like the human tour van. I mean, I'm up at Taylor <laughs> headquarters and I'm with Jared or Kieran or Andrew or any of the boys. You can put a, an iron in my hand and before it goes on a lock line machine. And I can tell you by the eye, I can tell you sometimes, especially with wedges, if it's even off a half a degree, I can give you wow. an eye and go, I think that's either a degree or a half a degree too upright with wedges. And as you get closer to four iron, it gets more to a degree, degree and a half. I'm, I can I'm, do I'm really, I'm really good at, at telling if the club is left-handed or right-handed. <laughs> that's about, that's about <laughs> as far as I go. <laughs> I think I'm not so. They, I, they think I'm the lie loft uh, Ray man. Just oh, we don't need the machine. Just put it in Mark's hand. He'll tell us if he needs to go <laughs> or down. Absolutely crazy. All right. Uh, our next topic. I'm curious to this uh, more, more, your experience with this because my experience with this is limited to the last five six years really um you know i interviewed a couple of uh players uh for radio you know say eight nine ten years ago but it's only been five six years since i've been out yeah. there 15 16 17 weeks a year kind of in pits and press conferences and doing one-on-ones after they're around so my real kind of uh, knowledge on this is is really limited in the last half a dozen years where you have been doing this like for a long time and, and you get to talk to the winner because TSN and CPE are the home of all major championship golf we get access to the winners and, and majors we get one-on-ones that we always show as well on Golf Talk Canada so Bob I'll get, get let's go all time and current here so let's go who is your uh, a couple of your all-time favorite interviews and favorite pressers current favorite interviews 
and pressers. And let's eliminate Team Canada because okay. you and I have a different relationship with Team Canada sure. than we have yeah. with everybody else. You know, we can call them right now and have a chat. I, I, let's remove them because they're all great guys. We all have personal relationships with them. Give me your all-time uh, interview, presser, and current day. Um, you know, I would say going back in time a little bit, the, the two, two of the really good guys to interview and for different reasons, Mark Kalkovecchia is the funniest and um, most engaging guy. He's so self-deprecating at himself, and yet he's just an amazing golfer. But he always talks very bluntly, always talks very openly, and you never went out of a press conference with him without laughing. On the other side, I would say Jack Nicklaus was always amazing. He would come in and he would he – would, first of all, he would know pretty much everybody's first name in the, in the, in the room, and he would call you by your first name. And, and he has such an, a remarkable memory. Here's a story. So 2000 U.S. Open, the one that Tiger won by a, a bajillion shots. That was the first one I think that was there since Nicholas won or Nicholas came back. He'd won it in 72 at Pebble Beach. So someone, one of the very early questions, someone said, Jack, what do you remember about the last round here at Pebble Beach? And he said, you want the, you want the clubs and the yardages? And he proceeded to go through and talk about every second shot or third shot into a green and the yardages he had. This is like 18 years later. And it was so remarkable to, uh, to hear him do that. So um, that's good. John Daly was always fun in his heyday as well. So, you know, he's, you always sit there and say you can't pull fat when he would be warming up and just <laughs> just silly things like silly things like that. Today's press conferences, I, I like I like Phil Mickelson. He's gotten a lot better at it. Tiger's gotten better too. He's a little more relaxed now. He used to go into a Tiger press conference and he would talk for half an hour and he wouldn't really say a thing. Uh, now he's a little bit more open. And I also like um, I also like Potty Harrington. He's uh, he's pretty funny. Sometimes he'll sit there and and you know he say, well I'm not going to talk for very long. And then you know 45 minutes later there's turning the microphone off on him but but he's always pretty engaging too i like harrington too for uh you might uh, get this feeling too bob that sometimes he'll give you like seven to eight minutes on a topic that you never thought you could get seven eight minutes on because yeah. he's very meticulous and scientific about things and i, I find that very interesting uh, all timeless again limited but if i'm thinking old timers uh i think probably my my absolute favorite is Nick Price. I mean, Nick Price oh, yeah. might be the nicest human being on the planet. Agreed. And uh, just what a wonderful man. And when he was uh, a captain of the President's Cup team, both him and, and Jay Haas were incredible uh, captains and, and two very nice men. In, in current day, I love Phil as well. Like Phil, yeah. because he makes our job so much easier. Like sometimes, <laughs> you know, you go, what am I going to get from this guy? Or maybe he had a rough round and now I got to interview him. And da, 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 and it's just... Phil, he he, just, he's, he's very easy to fill a notebook with some <laughs> quotes. That's right. You just go, just give him a mic and he gives you everything you need. Yeah. You and I have, uh, you and I have both suggested that Rory McIlroy is a great leader on and off the golf course. And yeah. he is a thoughtful answer and he's, uh, he's well done. I also like Jason Day quite a bit as well. Jason's very good. Yeah. Jason's yeah. one of the nicest men. Yeah. Outside of team Canada, I think outside of team Canada, I think maybe Jason Day and Adam Scott are the two nicest human beings on the PJ. <laughs> exactly. It'd be hard. It'd be hard to argue. Okay, Bob, before we bring in Adam Skelly, and we put a bow on our first video podcast. Uh, I want to just touch base on something very quick. You're working on an article. In fact, by the time this podcast sees daylight, it might actually already be up on tsn.ca. It looks like the government is in a position where they're not going to let us go play golf. Um, I don't know if that's the right choice, the wrong choice. I'm not a doctor. I'm just going to take the information and uh, it looks like the people are going to really not have the choice. But what are you hearing so far? Where's this going? Where's this story going for you? Yeah, I've been on the phone all day to a lot of people, different people. And I think, I think the best comment I had was from uh, a golf official. I won't say who he was, but he said, if we can't trust people to fix their ball marks, how are we going to trust them to keep them six feet apart for, for four hours? You know, it's going to be, I think in some ways, it's going to be the decision is going to be made for them. Quebec, Ontario, uh, are already closed. New Brunswick is already closed. Uh, the BC Golf Association has written a letter to the health minister in BC asking them to close. And that came as a result of a couple of, of officials there watching a report on one of the local news stations talking about how uh, showing people out golfing and they weren't adhering to the, to the, uh, the six foot uh, barrier or whatever you want to call the social distancing. So, um, and in other cases, you know, they're, they're not even open yet. I talked to uh, our friends out in Prince Edward Island and they actually had a good comment. They said, you know, um, our reservations, even before the pandemic, were way up on track to outpace last year. We don't typically open till late May. And so far, we've only had one cancellation. So 
that kind of gives me an indication that if there is a shutdown, but for most of the golf courses, that when we do get back to playing, man, it's every golf course in the country is going to be jammed. Yeah, I think that might be the play for sure. And that's a good, and I'm going to go with this, Bob. I'm going to go with, uh, I know it's going to be a hard economic, economically on a lot of people. Uh, we're all going through this together, but if there's any way possible to not cancel things and postpone them or find other dates, because when this is over, when it's safe, uh, and, and who knows when that's going to be for different parts of the world, I think it's important that we get out there and get back to life because the world's going to need it. Okay, we're going to come back to Bob for a final thought before we wrap up today's bo uh, broadcast. But I think it's time that we bring in our master producer, Mr. Yes. Adam Scully, for a few rapid fires here. So, uh, Scully, um, some rapid fire here on some of these. Uh, a day in the life of a producer at TSN. What do you do to get ready for Golf Talk Canada? Yeah, so to get ready for Golf Talk Canada, I send uh, the team an email, uh, typically Sunday night after all the action has finished. We discuss a show plan, a show outline, uh, how we want it to look. Basically, my job is to decide, let's say Tiger Woods wins, let's say and my goal is to make the best TV possible. So we're gonna show a sting of Tiger winning. We're gonna show Tiger speaking after his round, some boards to support his victory, and then give you guys your three or four minute time to chat about it. So uh, that's me in a day in the life. Um, on a Tuesday morning, I'll go in, we'll cut the elements together with our editors. You guys will come in, we'll go through the show outline in more details. Uh, and then we put the show together and then it goes to air uh, Wednesday afternoon. Okay, uh, what is the coolest thing or that you've seen in a tour van or you've seen us produce in a tour van or anything that you might get surprised from a tour van, a preconception that you had going in? Because these tour vans get better, it seems, on a yearly basis. The new tailor-made tour van is ridiculous. Like, it's like a spaceship on wheels. Yeah, I was going to say, so the tailor-made tour van is actually the only one I've ever been in. And I got to experience that with you guys in Carlsbad uh, in December. And that place is golf paradise. Two <laughs> levels. They record podcasts in there. Uh, there's a cool little locker with all their uh, tailor-made uh, tour pros. Uh, it's pretty cool to see how they get it done. And uh, once we're back on television, we're going to air an interview, uh, Mark, with yourself and Chris Trott and Wade Lyles uh, to really show a day in the life of uh, what goes on in tour van. All right, Scully, what about interviews? What's a favorite uh, player that you like to hear from, whether it's Bob after a major or whether it's uh, something on from PG Tour? Is there a player that pops out of mind where you go, when you know that Bob or I have a mic in front of them, uh, you can't wait to hear what comes out of their mouth? Well, you guys were discussing Rory McIlroy, and he is definitely one guy. But another guy we haven't discussed is Brooks Kepka. Because he is honest. He tells it as it is. There's no cliches. There's no nonsense. People, he might rub some people the wrong way because he is awfully blunt and incredibly cocky. But that's why he's as good as he is. You know, four major championships already. I always enjoy and look forward to Brooks Kepka press conferences. We remember last year before the PGA saying the majors are the easiest to win. People were sort of uh, poo-pooing that comment what's he do he goes on and wins the PGA championship that week I always look forward to a Brooks Kepka. and how about Jordan Spieth as well we haven't seen as many from him uh, because his play uh, he struggled in the past couple of years but he is always honest with the media gives some really thoughtful answers I really look forward to his answers uh, as well yeah, that's a good one, too. I like, and I do like the Kepka angle there, Scully, because he is controversial and he's got a lot of fans, but he's got a lot of people that he yeah. runs the wrong way as well. That always makes for good TV and radio. Scully, thanks so much, brother. All right. Thank you. Let's go. We'll bring him back, uh, Mr. Bob Weeks, here now as uh, we wrap up today's show. So, um, I'm calling it a show, but we'll refer to it as our video, <laughs> Golf Talk Canada video podcast, Bob. And hopefully, we can. Uh, you know, do uh, one of these a week moving forward and uh, we'll let you know where you can get them. Hopefully you can get them on tsn.ca and Golf Talk Canada platforms. But I want to remind everybody that Golf Talk Canada radio is still broadcasting every weekend on the PGA Tour radio network. If you're in Ontario, of course, you can get it live 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. every Saturday morning on TSN 1050, the iHeart radio app. We stream it at tsn.ca. So uh, Golf Talk Canada radio is uh, going absolutely nowhere. Uh, and uh, Bob is very active on tsn.ca. He's all over the COVID-19 situation and we'll be uh, looking for stories to, to write about. So I'm gonna throw this out there to everybody, where, whether it's Bob 
who's going to be covering stuff on tsn.ca, whether it's live Instagram chats that I'm doing Wednesday nights, whether it's here in the video podcast or Golf Talk Canada radio or anything that the Golf Talk Canada family is doing, reach out to us at Golf Talk Canada, at Bob Weeks TSN, at Z-Man Golf, at Adam underscore Scully. Those are the Twitter handles. Give us ideas. Give us your thoughts. Maybe Bob finds something that he int- gets him interested in. He digs his teeth into it and writes a great article that you'll listen to. So, <laughs> Bob, I think we're all reaching out for now, looking for ideas and thoughts and, and looking to see when we come out the other side of this thing. Yeah, tell us tell us who you'd, what golfer you'd like to hear more about. We can talk, maybe we have some experiences with that golfer. We can't promise you we'll get them on, but maybe we'll have some experiences about it. And maybe next time we'll even talk about some of the uh, the women golfers out there too, some good experiences with them. So That's thanks, it. Mark. We'll keep, well, thank you, Bob. We'll keep our eye on the ball. We're looking forward to bringing you this as often as we can and make sure you reach out on social media, give us our ideas. Remember, first good decision on the golf course always starts in the closet.